Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon, good evening. Um, so I'm Garrison Bess. Uh, I am the Director of Communications for Blacks in Cybersecurity. Um, thank you for coming to our first Fortress Talk, a um, new series that we're working on and partnering with Great Castle Security with. Um, so um, I am looking forward to this uh, partnership and this series. Um, so I want to, I don't want to hold any time. I want, uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me? Can everybody give me a uh, thumbs up or uh, put something in the chat? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and kick us off. I don't know if you guys heard me a little bit earlier, but I am uh, Garrison Best. I am Director of Communications for Blacks and Cybersecurity. Um, we are starting our new series of Fortress Talks uh, with sponsorship by Great Castle Security. So we're definitely looking forward uh, to it. And I don't want to hold too much of the time. I definitely want to get it over to Evan so he can introduce himself and talk a little bit more about uh, what's going on. So without further ado, uh, Evan Hill. There we go. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, can everyone hear me? We're good. All right. So, all right. Looks, all right. Looks like we they can't hear me, um, but it sounds like Garrison and looks like you guys can hear me, right? Oh no. Looks like we got some yeses in there. All right, awesome. So I'll get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, again, like as Garrison had stated, uh, this is a um, a talk that that's going to you know we we've called it Fortress Talks um, with my company that I work for, um, Great Castle Security. So I'm just going to kind of kick this talk off. It's going to be like a, a day in the life of a cybersecurity professional. So um, I will you know introduce myself. My name is Evan Hill. I'm a security specialist here at Great Castle um, on our technical team. So I handle a lot of our uh, uh, technical assessments that we do. So anything from vulnerability assessments, uh, cloud assessments, uh, Microsoft 365 assessments, um, also help support our penetration testing teams and also our um, incident response teams. So um, that's a little bit about me and um, you know, about what I do for Great Castle. So as the uh, slide in the beginning said, you know, I've been working in information technology for you know, close to 20 years, if not more. Um, it's pretty much all I know, all I remember, you know, uh, going back as a child, um, doing a lot of uh, you know, working with computers and just you know, basically being you know, a nerd and any, anything like that. So, um, one of the reasons that we're here for this talk uh, is just to kick off the initiative that I have for, you know, in, in, in our company that we were looking to, uh, you know, get into, you know, some more diversity and, and trying to, you know, get more talent and recruiting, um, you know, especially from, you know, our, our the, the black community, um, 
and hopefully, you know, I'm representing, you know, that well. So some of the some of the things that they wanted me to talk about, you know, or that I'm going to talk about tonight is, you know, how I got into security, um, you know, uh, how I transitioned from internal IT and, you know, got into security, you know, working here at Great Castle. And then, you know, a little bit about the future that I see for myself. Um, so going back, you know, like I said, I've been doing in, uh, information technology for over 20 years. I have, uh, you know, worked in various industries from finance to um, nonprofit. Uh, there's uh, other technology like software companies, um, things along that nature. So um, when I first, you know, got introduced to, um, you know, uh, I guess this security issue is at my first job, I was working for a nonprofit um, and I was working like a night shift. And I was pretty much, this was, you know, back in the early, you know, or the mid late nineties. So I'm kind of dating myself. Um, I was working a night shift and I was the only person, you know, that was on that shift that knew anything about computers. I mean, we were still running, um, you know, dot matrix printers. We were running, you know, dial up modems, all this, you know, fancy stuff back then. Um, but it came down to where I was the only one that could, um, you know, support our systems and get the dot matrix printers um, running again once, uh, you know, when, when they when they got offline. Not that that's, you know, a hard job or anything. Um, it's, you know, but, it, you know, a lot of people at during that time weren't used to it. So um, eventually, you know, I worked my way up to being like a, a, you know, help desk and, you know, officially doing help desk IT support for this nonprofit. Um, and then, you know, I had a meeting with uh, a new executive director and I found out that in my, I guess, professional profile, you know, in, in my jacket, um, they labeled me a hacker, you know? So back then the connotation of, you know, being a hacker was always, uh, you know, something bad, you know, somebody, um, you know, was breaking into, you know, things, you know, you know, people like Kevin Mitnick, um, along, you know, anything along those, those lines. So I always was offended that in my jacket, I was called the hacker, you know? So it was like, you know, it was like a bad connotation to me. So I just, you know, was like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, that, that can't be me. I'm, I'm here to try to fix things, make people's problems go away. Um, you know, and, and just, just do good, you know, so I couldn't have been, you know, a hacker. Um, so over the years, you know, I've I've accumulated a lot of experience, you know, of, you know, you know, fixing, you know, and troubleshooting, um, doing a lot of making all these systems work, you know, um, with limited budgets, you know, things along that nature. Um, so when I finally started really looking at, you know, information security um, as, you know, a profession when it started coming out, um, you know, and, and really getting to understand what the, the hacker, you know, I guess moniker really meant, um, you know, when it was really used, it was, you know, the original one was somebody, you know, cludging something together, you know, um, you go back to the stories of MIT and, and things like that. And, and just basically making something work that didn't work before or making it work the way that you needed it to work. Uh, that was the actual definition of a hacker. And so I always thought like, well, that's all I've been doing. You know, I've always been putting things together, um, taking them apart, breaking them, making them, you know, basically forcing my will upon different things. So in a sense, you know, when I look back on, on it, you know, that, um, I guess connotation of me of being a hacker was actually true. Because in that instance, you know, I was making things work. I was fixing, you know, things that weren't broke, you know, that, that were broken um, and, and just making sure that all the, the rest of the employees that I worked with and my colleagues could complete their jobs, you know, complete, you know, basically complete the mission. So that was always, you know, something, you know, I look back fondly on of like, man, I wish I would have known that, you know, that term hacker wasn't technically so bad and, you know, could have used it to my advantage where, I know that it was, uh, you know, kind of placed upon me as, you know, being a negative, um, you know, because I wasn't officially the IT guy. So they would, um, you know, 
just label me as uh you know this this rogue employee um that was out there to to do harm and you know and i wasn't so um over the course of the years working it um doing a lot of help desk um you know i gained a lot of experience of how to deal with end users um you know everyone's at a you know at this time a lot of people didn't really know how to work a mouse how to uh, you know what what a computer was and eventually you know it more and more, you know, computers were brought into all the companies and the various things that I did. So it it allowed me the ability to, you know, be able to relate pe relate to people and to be able to talk to others um, in a manner that that, you know, taking this this highly um, technical content and then, you know, I, I don't like using the term dumb it down, um, but just making it to where it it it's, you know, it resonates with that person. So I would find various ways to explain a lot of the technical stuff and making people feel, you know, I guess safe and secure and, and not feel like uh, I had more power over them because I knew this fancy little black box that sat on their desk and, and everything. So um, one, you know, over, over the course of the years, uh, you know, I, I started looking at various, uh, you know, certifications. Um, you know, I, attended college, you know, probably, you know, did a, a semester, then I had to had to leave, you know, from there. Um, so a lot of my experience always came, you know, from on the job, you know, learning it, breaking things, um, and learning how to fix them, you know, so uh, definitely, uh, that's one of the experiences, you know, that I gained, you know, I didn't really uh, have a lot of formal education with a lot of um, the stuff. It's just, I understood how computers work, how they needed to work. Um, and just, you know, kind of, kind of did my thing. So when I started, um, looking at different certifications and, and what I was going to go after, I tried, you know, Microsoft certifications, you know, going through the MCSE, um, took a few tests, I failed and I was like, something isn't clicking with me. You know, it's just, you know, Microsoft, I've been, I work with it all the time and these tests, this is not how we do anything um you know in the real world and they just didn't resonate um so the the next course i started was doing some cisco uh networking um uh cisco networking certifications so i went through all the all those courses and everything in that just started making sense you know it was at the command line it was you know you were either going to configure something and it was going to work or you didn't configure it and it didn't work um, there was a lot of, you know, binary, um, issues, you know, that, 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 that would come up, you know, just, uh, being able to, to, uh, see what you needed to do and then boom, you'd have the fix. So that all started making sense to me. And then, you know, I passed a few, you know, the Cisco certifications and then I took a security plus course, um, you know, and I was like, well, you know, it talks about security and, in the CCNA courses. So I was like, let me take this next step. I know security is a hot topic. Um, let's see how it goes. So I took a security plus course and the instructor that I got was absolutely amazing um, in, in terms of opening my eyes to um, a lot of the uh, nuances of cybersecurity. And all the places that that you know you can kind of take your career and your your path and and um, really uh, introduce me to a lot of the 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 forums that are out there you know so you know the National InfraGuard uh, Members Alliance um, some NIST stuff uh, a lot of the uh, um, ISO at the time and and just all this stuff that you know governance um, and and um, you know, compliance and all of that. So um, it was it was very, very enlightening, you know, with this uh, instructor. And, um, you know, it, it taught me that, okay, there's this, IT is a big world, um, you know, there's just more than desktops and servers and switches and networking gear. You know, there's this other side of it of, you know, we got all this going on, but how are we protecting it, you know? And, some of the things that we went over early in the uh, in the the security plus course i'm like man you know uh, the way that you're describing how things are getting in and how you know breaches are happening and how compromises are happening 
it it just made me say you know and look at the places that i work and every time i look i would always find a new issue you know i'm like man we're doing that oh we're doing that we're doing this we're gonna you know we're gonna be compromised you know here soon so i know i turned into you know kind of a you know uh, the boy who cried wolf at a lot of places um because security just wasn't at the forefront like it is now you know early on you know and you know starting you know in the you know 2000s and you know even you know going into 2010 um security just wasn't a concept a lot of a lot of companies and and a lot of it people didn't get so you know there were a lot of challenges you know coming up where you would you know as simple as like hey are we using more than eight characters for passwords or, you know are we allowing people to change passwords or you know are we requiring them to change passwords after 90 days you know thing things like that um those were all things that i would go back and i'd look at environments that i'm working in and saying hey you know we're not doing any of this you know um so it, it was really a you know kind of a uh, an awakening for me after going through the security plus and passing the exam and saying hey you know i need to be the 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 champion i need to be that person speaking up in these companies um you know because most of my experience were was in small and, and medium businesses um so once i started championing um you know security and you know information security um it, it's it's that's where you start getting a lot of you know headbutting because you know one it costs money um and then you know getting the budget and getting people to understand you know why we might need this um you know either whether it's a new tool or a new process um it's 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 hard to get people to understand that um you know especially you know upper management if they if it's not just baked into the culture to be more secure if a company hasn't you know um suffered a compromise or anything like that it can be a, a you know a hard you know a, a big rock to push uphill to get you know them to understand that you know and i've had many challenges you know um with trying to you know get organizations to be more secure and 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 at least take security you know um uh more uh, seriously than that you know because everyone you know a lot of a lot of times you know organizations just typically say well either we're too small it won't happen to us or you know we're too big and you know we have all these tools watching us and you know things like that so um that that was like you know my main introduction and why i wanted to you know start transitioning out of internal it and really to you know get into security um because you know i have a you know a strong passion for you know american football and um one of the 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 tenants that we go by is defense wins championships so i always look like well i need to protect um you know the organization i work for and that was through you know security um and and helping to try to change the culture within the the company to believe more um that you know they could they they can be more successful you know just being you know more more se secure you know and things along that nature so you know from you know i see a lot of you know there's some you know questions about transitioning from you know end user support and into cybersecurity um it you know it's a uh you know it, it can be a challenge you know there's it's it, it, it's helpful um you know going into a company you know that you know where you know um about technology and you know um, the way networks are set up you know the way you know active directory is set up all that's you know good knowledge to have and transition into you know um, security um you know as or you know as as a career path um but there's so much more you know to information security that it's uh you know it, it can be overwhelming you know so if you've ever looked at you know an information technology uh environment and says you know we got a bunch of switches we got firewalls we got routers you know access points uh endpoints you know software all this and think that it's daunting um the same could be said about you know cybersecurity. uh you know just here at you know our you know my company i'm part of the technical team but we have you know a whole nother side that deals with um, the business side. So it deals with, uh, you know, governance, risk and compliance, um, all these other different categories that um, 
you can, you know, focus on and become, you know, an expert in, you don't have to like know everything. And, you know, and, and even with the, you know, the, the governance and risk and compliance piece, um, you might not need a heavy technical background to still be in, you know, cybersecurity. So those are, you know, some of the, you know, points and, and things that I like about just information security as a whole, you know, it, it's, um, you know, it looks cool on TV. You know, you see all the the movies where, you know, hackers, you know, type in a, you know, a couple of keystrokes and then boom, they, they've got the keys to the kingdom. You know, we all know it doesn't work like that. Um, but when you come on to this other side and, you know, especially in the consulting realm where you're going into, um, various companies, you know, and they're coming to you to say, Hey, how secure am I? And, you know, you have to kind of give that, that list of, uh, you know, like you're vulnerable here, 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 and here, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's hard to, you know, for them to digest, you know, and things like that. So, you know, you definitely have to, you know, I guess, uh, you know, the, the transition of coming from a technical background and getting into cybersecurity, um, I wouldn't say, you know, you have to have that technical, you know, background, um, but it, you know, it helps because, you know, if you can understand how all this data is is moving across and, you know, between systems, um, you know, you can understand how to protect it. You know, you'll, you know, it's just like looking at a house and, you know, if you see multiple windows, you know, and, and windows that are unlocked on the ground level that someone can just hop through, um, you know, you can understand that type of security and, and that same mindset can definitely play into, um, you know, information security where, you know, you're just looking at the big picture and you're seeing all the holes, you know, all the windows, the doors, you know, things like that. And, um, um, you know, it, it helps to, you know, uh, I guess, you know, gain a better understanding of what, you know, the task is, you know, at hand. So, um, one of the things that, you know, I guess, you know, with that whole transition, um, you know, coming to Gray Castle, you know, I actually, uh, you know, was brought on to Gray Castle to do internal IT um, work. Uh, you know, one of, one of uh, you know, a good friend of mine and, you know, who had been a manager at another company, um, a manager of mine at another company started working at Gray Castle, you know, told me how great of a company it was and that he thought I would be a great fit here. Um, so I came over doing internal IT. And then I got to see um, how, you know, a company focused on cybersecurity um, and and the products and, and, and the services that we delivered, I got to see them, you know, from a different side before I actually started delivering, um, you know, and, and um, you know, I guess, you know, delivering these services that we offer. So it, it, it was a bit of a shock um, you know, to come, you know, move over from internal IT where I only had to deal with my systems and, um, you know, and worry about the data that, that we had to where now I'm looking at, you know, companies way larger than ours and under, you know, and, and saying, you know, man, you know, they're not that secure when, you know, we do a vulnerability assessment or, you know, we're, we're, uh, you know, doing, uh, a Microsoft 365 assessment, you know, and then then when we get into, uh, you know, some of those services, um, it was it, there was a lot of there was sticker shock, you know, I would say, you know, it was very, you know, overwhelming. Um, you know, there was a lot of moving pieces to kind of get a handle on of dealing with, um, you know, multiple clients and, and you know, multiple deliverables. Um, it's uh, it's definitely a, a, a bigger transition, you know, if you work for a MSP and, you know, um, and, and deal with a lot of clients or, you know, you're doing end user support and you're, you're supporting multiple clients, it might not be, um, as big of a transition, um, uh, to go from, you know, internal IT to, uh, you know, the, to the security side or, you know, delivery. Um, but I know for me, the struggles I had was the reality of, um, working actually, you know, and delivering projects in, uh, in, um, in cybersecurity. So there's, uh, you know, again, there's the, the, the look of, you know, um, what movies and TV projects as, as cybersecurity. Um, but the reality is, is like, you know, you can have all the fun, you know, 
doing penetration testing or, you know, uh, looking for details and incident response things. But eventually you're going to have to deliver a report to um, that client. And that is a huge transition where if you've never had to write reports before, um, writing, you know, and delivering a report to a company that kind of details out and, you know, and doing the analysis on that, um, it's a whole different bar ball game, right? You know, it, it takes uh, a lot of, um, you know, uh, it just takes a lot out of you, you know, from mentally, you know, and, and, you know, being physically exhausted, depending on how, you know, how fast you have to turn around these reports. So, you know, for those, you know, that are trying to um, transition over, you know, um, you know, it might be easier if you're going to internal IT security, um, you know, with just one company and only worrying about their companies. But if you're trying to get into consulting, um, like what we do, uh, you know, there is a, um, a pretty, you know, it, it's really fast paced, you know, it's, it's moving, it's, you know, you're doing one project and you're on to the next and, and, and things can get, you know, spiral out of control. So you definitely have to make sure your organizational skills and, and, um, you know, writing skills are up to par, um, when, uh, you know, when you're looking at doing that transition, you know, so, um, that's a little bit about how I got to, you know, Gray Castle, um, as far as, you know, like, like I said, I was brought over, um, from, you know, a former manager. Um, you got to always have, you know, keep, you know, one of the things that I always, you know, was always told was, you know, don't burn your bridges. So, you know, every company that I had to, you know, I either left or had to leave, um, I made sure that I left on good terms. So, you know, this is what gave me my opportunity to get into, you know, cybersecurity was, you know, being a good employee for someone else. And now I, you know, I have um, the, the uh, you know, I got the inroad. And so now what I'm trying to do is is just give, by, is give back, you know, I, is giving the experience of someone that's on the other side um, and, you know, doing what I do. Um, I guess uh, some more insight to what I actually do, you know, for Great Castle. You know, again, like I said, I'm, I'm on the technical team. Um, so I help out and do a lot of, you know, vulnerability assessments. So I use a lot of the tools that are, you know, pretty common, like Nessus, you know, doing, uh, vulnerability assessments on, on companies. Um, the biggest part of the job is, uh, you know, I would have to say is going to be the report writing, you know, and the analysis. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen, um, a, uh, a Nessus scan, a vulnerability scan, and looked at all the vulnerabilities that that um, um, that that come up, and uh, um, you know that that come up on on a scan, and just the amount of data that you have to process and and sort, you know, between criticals and highs and lows and mediums. Um, there's a lot, so uh, you know you can be dealing with thousands of endpoints, and you know you have to parse all that information down, make it digestible to um, the uh your to your client and um who you are you know um you know who you're contracted to work you know work with so a lot of that is is just you know it it, it can be daunting at first you know because you're looking at this big stack of of data and and it's like what do i do with it you know um fortunately for you know us and you know great castle you know they've been around they have an established system you know, it wouldn't, you know, it's not like I had to start from scratch and, and develop my own process of, of how I'm going to analyze a lot of this, you know, had some good mentors um, on the team already. Um, so it, it helped out with uh, doing the analysis, you know, and then, you know, having peer review of the reports and getting told, hey, you know, this doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, you miss this, you miss that, you know, and, and learning, you know, from there. So it's, it's been, um you know, really fortunate, you know, and, uh, you know, I, it, it's, I found that the reality is, you know, like our team consists of the incident response team, the vulnerability assessment team and, and the penetration testing team. And I always thought that I was going to do some penetration testing. You know, I got all the courses I, you know, I've done CEH, I've done, you know, the pen test plus, you know, I even looked at, uh, you know, e-learn security and, and, you know, jumped on their, uh, I think it was their junior or junior, uh, certified penetration tester and the penetration testing student, you know, things along that, 
um, that, that nature. Um, it, it's once I seen the, the classwork and I'm like, wow, this is all cool. But then I got to see it in practice. It was, it, it, it was eye opening, And I'm like, wow, I don't think I want to be a penetration tester anymore. You know, that it, it's, it's, a you know, from our side and what we do, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, and it, it's not, it doesn't look like, you know, TV. So for a lot of the people that are looking at that, um, you know, as, as being a, a possible, you know, um, career path is you want to be a penetration tester. Um, it's, you know, just, just know that you're going to be in for, you know, a lot of work. Um, you know, half of it is probably less than half is going to be that technical side. We're actually doing testing, you know, and uh, it's, it's all going to be in that reporting, um, you know, being able to turn out a good product that says, you know, Hey, yeah, you know, we were able to exploit something, you know, from these vulnerabilities, but this is how you're going to fix it. You know, so you always have to keep in mind, um, you know, how you're going to fix, you know, a vulnerability, you know, make, uh, make that ex exposure less. Um, then, you know, there's things like incident response. Um, if anyone hasn't done that, that's where, you know, if, uh, you know, uh, a company has, or an organization has, um, a compromise and, you know, they call up our hotline, you know, which we have, you know, 24 by seven, um, incident response capabilities. Um, you know, our, our team is going to jump on it. They're, you know, going to go through and they're going to dig through the weeds, you know, so that's a lot of log reviews. Um, you know, you might, you know, uh, the attackers don't know, you know, that you're not working, you know, they're going to pick the time best for, you know, for them so that you might get a call at three o'clock in the morning and you got to respond to it. Um, you know, so there's lifestyle changes that you have to think about, you know, when doing incident, you know, response, incident handling, um, you know, some of that stuff is, you know, what they don't tell you in the classes or the courses that you may be taking either at uni or, or just, you know, doing certification classes is that, um, you know, there, there may be lifestyle changes that you have to accommodate, um, in order to go after a certain career path, you know, for cybersecurity. Um, so, you know, those are, those are some of the experiences that I've had, um, you know, that, you know, it may sound, you know, bad, but it's, I, you know, I love what I do. I finally found, you know, that passion. I've always liked IT, you know, and, and you know, and, and dealing with information technology. Um, it's, it's always, it, it's been second nature to me. Um, you know, it just, it, it, it comes easy. But when I really had a passion for technology is when I, um, when I learned about cybersecurity and, and all the different avenues and, and how, um, cybersecurity plays into an organization and, you know, being able to protect them and, and, um, and, and keep them, uh, you know, secure, you know, making sure, you know, nobody wants to be on that. And, you know, think of, you know, the last colonial pipeline breach, you know, or, um, you know, the TJX, you know, breach Home Depot, all those, nobody wants to be on that. And, you know, nobody wants to have to say, Hey, we've been breached, you know, and, everything that comes behind that, you know, and, and speaking of the, the breach word, um, you know, here at Great Castle, we call it the B word. Um, you know, we try not to say it, uh, you know, all that much because there is some, you know, legal ramifications by saying, you know, we've been breached, you know, so um, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of pieces to that, that, you know, we have to learn, um, you know, once you get into cybersecurity uh, that, that, you know, it's just, stuff that you're going to have to pick up on the job, you know, that the training materials that, that you know, that you read um, is not going to enable you uh, to learn any of that. So um, I think, it, you know, the one of the, you know, and speaking of learning, you know, it's a constant, you know, every day you're going to learn something new, you're going to learn something um, that is, uh, you know, you're going to, you're just going to constantly keep learning and, you know, there's new attacks. Um, new attack vectors, um, you know, so the the more you're ingrained into keeping up and staying up with technology and, and the new attack, you know, vectors and, and things along that nature, the better you're going to be um, as a, you know, security professional. Um, you won't know it all, but if you pick a, I guess, a, a, a path that most interests you and, and become that subject matter expert, then, you um, you're going to, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find 
um, a good balance and, 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 uh, you know, a passion for, you know, things. So, you know, just staying on that. So I guess to kind of wrap up and, and, and get into some, you know, some of the questions that, that I see that we, you know, we have popping up, um, you know, one of the things I want to address is, you know, what do I see in my future? You know, um, I'm learning, I'm still learning a lot about the cybersecurity, you know, as, as a profession, um, you know, the technical pieces I think I have, but, you know, there's still a whole lot more that, um, you know, I need to learn, uh, you know, when it comes to, uh, other sides and, and how all the pieces come together, you know, from governance, risk and compliance and how those non-technical procedural based uh, items of cybersecurity play into the technical piece and how we build our infrastructure. So, um, you know, for me, it's it's how do I wrap this up into a whole picture and um, and, you know, to where I understand all the levels, you know, I might not be an expert in everything, but it's it's how do I you know take pieces from each one and know enough about it to where you know we can put you know a holistic uh, you know or I can have a more holistic knowledge base uh, you know for myself so you know definitely see a lot more training um, ahead of me I um, you know uh, a, a, you know some a couple more certifications definitely going to be um, uh, you know looking at uh, trying to acquire my CISSP. Um, and I know um, BIC has a good program, you know, and, and study groups for that. So definitely want to, you know, plug them for, you know, on that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, the, the future for cybersecurity, um, you know, it, everything's only going to get um, more connected and there's only going to be more things to, you know, to deal with. So um, I think it's, uh, it's good. You know, it, it's, it's definitely um, a path that we can, all get into, you know, and, and be able to thrive. So, um, yeah, I guess we can start with some of the Q and A's. Um, I know we've seen a few that came up. Um, so I will see if we can answer. Um, looks like we have one that says, um, I'm interested in blue team. Um, what would be the best course after getting uh, security plus certified? So I think for, you know, blue team, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of courses, I know uh, offensive security, they just released a new um, uh, defensive, I can't remember the name of the, uh, uh, of the certification, but it's a defensive course rather than the actual pen testing course. And they go over things like, you know, um, SIMS and, and, you know, threat hunting, things along that nature. You know, I would definitely stick with uh, a lot of your known, you know, uh, you know, certified, you know, or, or, certification track so oscp the you know from offensive security um also um the saic uh and and their um GAC certifications they have one specific to um blue teaming um that i think you know when i looked at some of the uh you know what the course content was going to be about i think it looks really good so if you're really interested in that um you know those would probably be the next places i would look at So the next question was, um, how would you say the importance um, in quotes of acquiring a certification change over the years? Um, it, it, I, I mean, that's, that's kind of like a loaded question, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I have a few certifications, um, but it's, uh, I would say that they still are relevant. Um, you know, uh, you know, if you don't have that university, um, background, uh, you know, to get some of the fundamentals, at least you'll, you'll get them there, um, with those certifications. Um, uh, but uh, again, you know, um, if it's something that you love, you know, and you, you are putting the time in to, um, learn about it on your own and, and stay focused, um, you know, it, it's, as long as you get that opportunity, you gotta, you, know, you gotta run with it. Um, the certifications may help you get your foot in the door um, because a lot of companies uh, require that, you know, especially if you don't have, you know, like a bachelor's or, you know, a, a, you know, a secondary education um, uh, diploma. But I think, um, you know, from here, you know, the, they're, they'll probably have more weight um, 
than ever, you know, just like how they have been, especially from, you know, a security um, perspective. There's there's a lot out there. You have the, you know, the CASP, then the CASY, uh, um, you know, from CompTIA, um, you know, I mentioned there, Pentest Plus. So there's a lot of certifications out there. It's just all going to really, you know, just be determined on where you're going to take your cybersecurity path to, you know, whether you're going to do the the GRC stuff, which is the governance, risk, and compliance, or you're going to be on the technical side. If, you know, I can't stress enough, if you're going to do the technical work, like pen testing, v, uh, vulnerability assessments, and, you know, incident response, it helps to have a technical background, um, you know, and at least understand how um, networks work and function and how, you know, like I said, the, the packets get to where. Um, it does help because you'll, you know, be able to understand what these, how these vulnerabilities have, are exploited and how to protect them. So I guess that's a, you know, drawn out answer for that one. <clears throat> All right. So this one is, uh, can you please elaborate on the difference between CS? So I'm assuming that's cybersecurity and IT. Um, so information technology, um, it's still a great area for many people. Um, I can only give you, you know, my opinion and what I think, you know, so information technology is just all the, the, the technology that we're going to use to communicate, you know, in the modern day. So, um, you know, laptops, desktops, tablets, you know, mobile devices, um, you know, switches, routers, those are, you know, IT devices that, um, that are needed to communicate and, and, and do work on a, you know, a modern network. For cybersecurity, it's you know everything that's that's related to protecting those assets and the data um, that um, you know that an organization has, you know, because that's you know pretty much their their most uh, you know important assets is you know intellectual property, their people, customer lists, you know, contact lists, um, you know, finance records, you know, things along that nature. Um, so. You know the cybersecurity is just you know protecting you know a lot of those assets. Hopefully that um, kind of clears it up. Um, question is: Do you work directly with other parts of the business um, outside of the SOC um, or or CISO? Yeah. Um, so I'll you know one way to kind of explain you know how you're gonna how um, I you know security in affects all parts of the business is, you know, if I give an example, when we do our incident uh, response tabletops, um, which is basically we, we generate scenarios um, that uh, are common, you know, like ransomware or insider threats. Um, and we run through a simulated um, uh, scenario with a client, we always tell them, you know, it, it's, it's not a IT problem, you know, it's a business problem that, you know, so when a, a compromise happens, it's it's never just going to affect IT, you know, and and systems admins, you know, it's going to affect uh, down along the line, you know, you're going to, if it's an insider threat, you got to get HR and legal involved. If it's, you know, a ransomware, you know, obviously, uh, you're going to have to get legal and then maybe, you know, reach out to cybersecurity or uh, cyber insurance, you know, to see how they're going to cover you. Um, you know, you're going to have to get other parts of the business because if there's downtime, you know, if you, you know, produce items to sell and your salespeople can't sell those items because your systems are down, you know, you can then see how it's going to, um, you know, it, it kind of snowballs. So, you know, you always have to keep in mind, you know, that, uh, you know, security is, it's not just an IT problem. It's, you know, it's a business problem. Let's see. Um, this one is: Are you writing analysis reports for clients, IT staff? So um, typically, when you know, with our engagements, yeah, you know, the the people that we most engage with are going to be the IT staff. But usually, it's someone up above them that either made the request to get one, you know, to enter into one of our projects, you know, with one of the services that, that, that we do. So we, we write the, you know, all of our, you know, reports have an executive summary. So it's kind of high level kind of, you know, goes over uh, what we found, you know, what we looked at, um, you know, what, what 
uh, I guess the project entails, you know, whether it's vulnerability assessment or, you know, pen penetration testing includes a high level, you know, overview of our findings. So that's usually more geared towards the executive, you know, management area. And then there's more technical details, you know, especially from my side, you know, I only do, you know, technical reports. So there's, it includes a lot of the technical stuff that is meant for the IT staff. So it, it's a little bit of both, you know, there's, there's going to be some uh, reports that need to be more high level and, you know, or there's going to be pieces of the report that's going to be more high level and geared toward a different non-technical audience. And then there's going to be the piece that's going to be geared towards the, um, you know, the, the more technical audience. And so this is a good one. Um, what area of cybersecurity do you recommend for beginners? Um, I'm going to probably do take the cop out answer and say all of it. Um, there's there's so many avenues. Um, you know, again, you know, like like I said, just our company in general, we're, we're split into for our service delivery um, team, we're broken up into two different um, sections, I guess, you know, we have a technical and then we have a business um, unit, um, you know, and then, you know, like I said, we have incident response. Uh, um, we do penetration testing, we do vulnerability assessment. Um, we even, you know, do SOC audits, um, ISO audits, you know, things along that nature. So there's a lot that's out there that you can do, um, you know, as a beginner and start, you know, somewhere, you know, a lot of our positions start off as associates and then, you, you know, you move up and, you know, as you perform and, and, um, and uh, gain more experience. So can't say that there's a specific area that I would recommend other than, you know, get out there, figure out what's best, you know, for you, what you like, um, you know, what, you know, if you're not a technical person, then maybe, you know, penetration testing isn't for you. Um, you know, it might be something on, you know, the compliance side. So, but it's, you know, just get out there and find it out. Let's see. Um, <laughs> yeah. No one wants to be on, on uh, the B word side, you know, can businesses, use lessons learned to make better business decisions um, that allow security practitioners um, to better defend? Um, I would say yes. Uh, you know, it's, you know, I bring up that, you know, the boy who cried wolf, um, you know, uh, at, uh, you know, saying a lot because I know in my transition, you know, a lot of the positions that I've, I've been at, when I started really learning about securities, you know, and or security vulnerabilities and and how they get exploited, um, I was that you know person that was you know that little boy blue. Um, you know, it, it's I would scream you know to anyone that would listen to me. You know, hey, we're vulnerable here. This is gonna you know this we need this or we need that or you know something's gonna happen. And after a while, you know, nothing happens. So you know, you just kind of get looked at as being crazy. Um, there's always been a disconnect between IT and security, you know, so getting that gap and that disconnect, um, bridged, I think is going to be a big step forward in, in securing, um, organizations as, as a whole, um, you know, IT has one set of responsibilities, you know, they're, they're, um, their end users and the services that they provide are what they are focused on. Security is protecting, you know, the environment and, and the data that the company as an organization has. So they have two opposing, um, there's always that, you know, the, the uh, two opposing uh, views. So it, it's kind of hard, you know, to, to say, um, you know, if a company does get, get, um, you know, get compromised, uh, do they learn from it? I mean, they should, but, um, you know, there's times that, you know, are, you know, the, the, you know, that, that a company doesn't learn or they, or there's a new vulnerability, you know, um, I think on our website, there's, you know, something where, uh, if, if, um, an organization is compromised, then there, there's a higher percentage, you know, and they're more likely that attackers are going to come back to that same organization because maybe you haven't remediated all the vulnerabilities that that exist in your environment. So um, hopefully they learn and and they get more backing. You know, um, security and the IT team gets more backing, more funding from uh, the executive level to remediate a lot of those vulnerabilities. But um, I would say that 
you know, it, it, you know, it's hard. There's a lot of things that come from it. Any other, let's see. All right. Uh, can you speak on what may be best for those who are looking to get into cyber, but non-technical roles and certs? Um, so I can, I guess I could speak to, to that as far as what I've seen from, you know, my colleagues that, that are, that are working on the other side, the business side, um, you know, learning about ISO, um, learning about, um, you know, like NIST, uh, standards, um, learning about, uh, like SOC you know, to type two, um, things, uh, those are some, some of the non, you know, uh, I guess technical, um, type things. Compliance is a big one. So you have PCI DSS, you have HIPAA, you know, all the, uh, all the other different regulatory compliance, um, things, you know, Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, you know, things along that, um, GLBA, you have the new CMMC, so those are a lot of the, um, non-technical pieces that, uh, you know, if you were to, you know, try to get into cyber, um, you know, those would be it. Um, as far as certifications, um, there's, you know, I believe, you know, from some of the ones that I've seen that some of my colleagues have, there's, you know, the CISM, there's a CISA. Um, so those are, you know, certified information security auditors and managers, I believe. Um, you know, don't quote me on that one. Um, I don't dwell on that side too much. Um, but you know, there, there's, there's a lot of certifications out there that are geared, you know, for non-technical, um, pieces. Um, you know, I would say start with the SANS Institute and kind of work from there. Um, that's a good one to, to look at. That one, uh, looks like that's something else. Uh, any other questions that we didn't get to? All right. Looks like there's we got through all the questions. So, you know, I appreciate everyone, you know, joining in and, um, you know, listening to the talk. Hopefully it was beneficial. Um, hopefully you learned something a little bit about, um, you know, this side of of IT you know, on the consulting world. If you're looking at a trans uh, transfer over. Um, so, yeah, um, give it back to uh, Garrison. All right, cool. Thanks, Evan, man. That was great. I think you uh, really touched on some really good points, um, covered a, a wide variety of things. So I think um, everyone kind of got a little something out of it. Um, for our community and everybody tuning in, um, definitely go check out uh, Great Castle Security, kind of just read up what they're doing, uh, see what job openings they have. Um, we also have some of their job openings on our website, on our job board. So go over to our website and check that out as well and then and tune in for this series we're gonna we're gonna keep trying to bring you talks and um cool and interesting people like evan uh for the rest of the series and we just really appreciate all of you all and just thank you again yeah